a mi to fo a mi a mi a mi to fo 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 thank you everyone for uh, coming to this uh, off week um tai san kai pian treaties and response and retributions uh speech um we are going to continue from what we have last time uh in you know explaining and making uh the debut for our youth group and for us myself in uh, uh you know sharing this wonderful practical book of karma uh, to everyone uh last time i think uh, i have mentioned about uh, the importance of understanding karma in Uh, your own life uh in making sure that you do not pass trespass any offenses just like law you don't break the law and um <clears throat> to avoid that in order to you know not lose your fortunes to preserve your fortunes and to gain your fortunes not just money but good fortunes you know the merits in terms of you know everything in your life uh relationships career uh, family uh, in health uh, in quality of life etc etc so everyone wants a happy life and happy life was defined by this and understanding karma will help you to avoid the misfortunes or to reduce the mis uh, the karmic debt which is the debt of misfortune that you have incurred in the past and also to help you to um, preserve and to pursue um, greater good fortunes that's the basic uh, understanding of this um, kind of teaching you know and for the pure land practitioners or any buddhist uh, who truly aspire to live for six rooms to aspire to be uh, more than just that more than just having a good fortune you want to be a bodhisattva to help a lot of beings you want to be an arahat to gain enlightenment escaping from these six rooms This is also important for us to learn uh, how to <clears throat> navigate through this karma and as like a, a mirror to tell ourselves what is right, what is wrong. Over here, you're looking at the virtuous individuals. It's telling you what is right. It's quite broad, um, principle-based. It's not like uh, they won't show you the examples and everything because examples are given in commentaries. Um, commentaries by Master Ching Kong, but there are also ancient commentaries that use real life examples. So this thing are all telling you, you know, what you should do. Uh, have you done it? What you should not do? Have you avoided it? Um, if there's even one or two that you have, you know, uh, not done well enough, or even you do the good, but you haven't improved it to the perfection, Or maximum then obviously what you get will be that level uh, like for Buddha he has done everything to the maximum obviously you must understand it does not being accomplished in one lifetime so give yourself a bit of break but you need to be constantly on like like work and everything you always need to keep yourself on tap with your progressions so as this one for cultivation as well um, So back to the point. Uh, today we're going to learn about chapter two, because last week, last last week actually, we're just talking about the off week. We have done uh, the introductions of the uh, Tai Chang Kai Pian. Uh, all right, and the uh, commentaries, the, the pro forward from um, for this book. And then we've done cause and effect to the the whole core tenet of this entire book. Uh, only us are the person responsible for anything that happened to us, and whatever we receive is exact. 
the measurement is exact as what we incurred. And this is a um, further explanation of how you know punishment works and how we should want to avoid it if we want to have good fortune. Uh, and among all the good fortune, long life is the best. Without long life, everything you have is useless. Because if you die, all the fortune or the family or anything, it doesn't work anymore. So now, we go into the second chapter, the virtuous virtues, the virtuous individuals. So, we would read by two lines and two lines, okay? That's how they do it in Chinese. And usually it's in one, two phrase by two phrase. So first phrase is, Shi dao ze jing, fei dao ze tui. Bu lu xie jing, bu qi an shi. He walks the path of virtue and avoids the path of vice and evil. He does not stray from what is proper and avoid committing offenses in secret, thinking that no one will know. So the first one is, he walks the path of virtue and avoid the path of vice and evil. So that already tells you, uh, if uh, you want to avoid any misfortune, you have to do the right thing, basically. That's the simplest way of saying it. Uh, you must always think about uh, when you do things, is it reasonable? Is it lawful? Uh, reasonable, lawful, uh, and also is it um, compassionate? Is it um, suitable? For this, uh, uh, for this situation, you know, in terms of you know, people, you know, it's read the room kind of thing. Um, then, if you understand that these three criteria has been met, reasonable, lawful, uh, and you know, fit the situation, uh, the social situation, fit the social situation, then you go and do it without regretting it, because what you're doing will will generate um, good response uh, in return. As a human, we always uh, work on responses. Uh, we might always say that uh, don't um, how to say don't care about uh, what others say or anything. But but when we interact with people, people's responses are a way for us to understand what other. Um, what others has felt, what others have other, how they receive your words and everything. Uh, it's one of the indicators of uh, you to understand them and also to interact with them. So if you do the right thing, um, that means you do not harm them. You do not want to, uh, you know, hurt them. You want to make sure they actually got benefit from your actions. And that's what Path of Virtue is about. Sometimes it may come across as brash or as a little bit straightforward. They can't take it. You see how much they can take it, then you give them the dose. If they really can't take it at all, just give them a more vague description. If they can take it, you can test the water, right? You can just try to see if they can really take the the the, 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 the advised. Obviously, you need to make sure your advice is good advice in the first place. Uh, that requires wisdom and experience and you know teachings help to help you and you need to actually go through that to understand and then and then you like give the advice to this person if they can accept it and they don't seem very angered or try to force a laugh or something then keep you know give them even more advice they are close to heart so this is how you do it for people who are your family you give them three times uh, more more chances more advice um, but do not spare anything when you're giving yourself the advice. Spare nothing. Don't lie to yourself. Be real. Because the path of vice and evil is always coated with sugars. Coated with nice, sweet talks, uh, you know, making you feel nice and honeyed, but inside is poisoned. That's how people walk into the path of vice and evil. Who wants to be evil? Who wants to be a vice, wicked person? Everyone's everyone is a hero in their own story. You ask the murderer, you ask the you ask the robbers, you ask everyone, they will say the cool part about it. You know, you know I used to rob hundred banks, you know. It's so cool. But they know it's wrong. Uh, but they coated it, right? To themselves first. You have to convince yourself, right, before you commit that. 
anything you do. Same of virtues, right? Virtue sometimes is bitter. Reality can be bitter. Reality can be hushed. Uh, but it's, it shows you the core. Like it shows you, not, not bitterness, but it shows you that um, it is what it is. And virtue means that you walk according to the way uh, that is honest, that is true, uh, that is not deceitful, that reaches the other's heart and that helps them to be a more compassionate, to be a more wise person uh, in dealing with anything. You know, Even though something is right, you don't rush hate into it. You look at the situation, assess it, understand the current environment, and then see what kind of advice you can give or what kind of action you can do that fits the situation and fits the environment. But you need to know what is right, what is wrong. So I'll, uh, I'm not going to too far, hopefully. So the first one is So virtue, what is right, what is lawful, and what is... Sometimes the law might not be the right thing as well. Uh, some laws are reflecting their society's uh, time. But what is right will always be right. That means a virtue is like a timeless element. It's always there. You know, the five precepts. You know, in, 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 if, you want, if you don't bring out any of these tenets, it's hard to understand what is right. We'll put our own interpretations. But who are we? We are not enlightened. We are not gaining any sagehood. We're still, we could we say no one is a saint. That's the reason why we have a word called saint. They are the one who set the path for us so that we can get out of misfortune. Remember, there's consequences of everything. Do the right thing will bring you to the path of good fortune. If anything else, you can't take it. This kind of uh, thinking, think about fortune and misfortune. I'm bringing it down, stripping it down to the most bottom line mindset. I, did, I don't encourage that. This, this one is more like pursuing profit kind of mindset, which is you should upgrade that mindset. But if you can't take any of those high road thinking, then at least think about what is right will bring me fortune. What is wrong will bring me misfortune. I want fortune. I don't want misfortune. Hence, I do what is right and I avoid what is wrong. Obviously, you still need to improve from that. You know, whether fortune or misfortune, I still do what is right. And then you get better and better. But right now, we can think of that way. He does not stray from what is proper and avoid committing offenses in secret, thinking that no one will know. So after this first 10 sentence of telling you how you should proceed with your life, do the right thing, uh, you know, avoid what is not, all right? Um, they continue with Bu uh, Do not walk the path, do not stray of, from what is proper. You know, and avoid committing offenses in secret. They know that under people's eyes, it's hard for you to do anything improper. Well, I think nowadays, they still do it. They do it in the park. Anyway, uh, just, yeah. All right, look at, look at nowadays, man. It's, it's not, this one is not even applicable anymore. But yes, uh, a lot of people tend to be more relaxed in secret uh, in you know, if you're by yourself or just by a couple partner, by, by your own family, um, obviously you get relaxed and more. You don't aware of what is proper ethic or not. I'm not. I don't think this word is trying to tell you you have to be strict and tense all the time. But you need to know what you should not do, no matter what. Um, that one of them is most obvious: sexual misconduct. Right. But not only that. Okay, that's very obvious. Why right? you do it in the secret? outside of the site or you know, outside of your current family. That's even worse. Uh, extramarital affair. But also the other aspect, like Mr. Yu's situation, is also straight from what is proper and what's committing offenses in secret. And his is like one of the, you know, the, 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 the um, his Wen Chang society uh, that he has promoted, you know, saving lives and all that. But in secret, he's, he still eat meat and then he still, um, you know, uh, used those paper improper, in, improperly, even though you promote reduced waste. It's like saying that, you know, uh, we should not, uh, um, we should not use too much plastic bag. We should reduce the plastic bag use. But every time we go grocery, you still get one plastic bag from the shop. So these are also committing offenses in secret. You don't press it. You don't practice what you preach. 
um, outside of the person, you know, maybe a Buddhist circle, and then you do something else different. Be be consistent. Be one. Inside and outside is one. Right. Um, start from that. Then, you know, this is the first step to be good, basically. Baby steps, right? The first step, the first level is walk the path of virtue, avoid the path of vice and evil. This is quite reflective of Bible and other major religion teaching as well. I mean, just be good. Just understand what is good from these teachings. There's a reason why this teaching exists. To tell you what is good. So the first one is don't stray from what is proper. What does it mean, don't stray from what is proper? No matter what you're doing, whether you're by yourself or by others, in front of the public or in, in private, you stay consistent. No stealing, even in private. You make sure that you don't take advantage of other people just because they're close to you. There's a form of stealing. I've been using five precepts. No no killing. No killing doesn't mean necessarily actually killing. That one is very obvious. No one needs to no need to explain that. But in terms of your diet, reduce the meat diet. It's also quite obvious, you know, vegetarian. Another form of more subtle way of uh, this precept is no invoking angers in others not creating troubles or annoyance towards others. You annoy others is also a form of killing, in a sense, because you create that negative karma for yourself and others. And they have hatred. Killing came from hatred. So, same goes for lying. Lying is the most obvious one, right? You say one thing, and then you do another thing. So, that's offenses in secret. Now, we we'll continue. Ji de lei gong yu ren cai se. So it's all about wealth and uh, sexuality. These two is the major thing that people will commit offenses in secret. Wealth is called bribery, right? You do it in secret. Uh, sexuality is not the sexual misconduct. It's another form. Uh, 三人不再做二人居，从最近要出。Yeah. So these two sentences is just telling you to be good that's the that's the that's the first thing you need to think about what is right what is wrong and if you want to do things right you don't do things right in front of auntie and not in front of the temple you do it right because it's right so no matter where you are it is like that you don't retreat from that and congratulations you're on your path of great for miss uh, great fortune you're on the path to pure land Let's go on to the second one. Going to the first four yeah, for those who can read Chinese. He amass, merit, and treats everything with gentleness and compassion. He is loyal to his countrymen, filial to his parents, and kind to his brothers and sisters. So the second one is like kind of like love thy neighbor, in a sense. Right, it's more.、Uh, Close to the ears of the West, right? If they read the Bible, love thy neighbor, right? First is walk the paths of righteousness. Second is love thy neighbor. I told you this is across every religion, every teaching. But people might be saying, "Yeah, it's simple." No, foundation. That's the reason why our society is a mess. These are not done properly.、Uh, first of all, is 积德累功 a mass merit and treats everything with gentleness. And oh, 积德累功 a mass merit. Right, Chinese is split into he amass merit. What does merit means? Right. What form? And why does it require amass? Require accumulation. A person who do good deeds, right? It does not, you know, like、uh, Rome was not built in a day. Right. Our characters, our. Behavior, our habits, does not happen in an overnight. It does not change overnight. It does not become, you know, you don't you don't become what you are right now overnight when you were born from、uh, your mom. So you have to go through all that environment, condition, education, you know, all the favorite TV shows that you watch with the idols and all that. Also, your friends. 
the cool guy, the guy you don't like in school, or and then some book that you read that inspire you, or some terrible encounter that makes you think this is how things is. Such as such as such, you amass so much of this experience and form into the person you are nowadays. Subconsciously, you have so many past life that goes through many kind of experience that also forms who are you today, who you are today. Same goes for your habits. Same, the, uh, who you are, right, means habits and all that. So, in Liao Fan and Mister Yu's teaching, we talk about how they struggle when they start to know what is right. Right, he has to go through the virtue of evil, avoid evil, and he knows that the theory and all that. But you know, this is taking time. We tend to go relax, too relax, when we're by yourself, and that's when all the offenses come back. So no matter how well you do this in the public, this will come back again and again, unless we have a resolution, resolve. So this person who are mass married means he always do good. As if he's drinking water, breathing. I already mentioned that、um, the past sessions. You, you keep doing that, like you go for gym to build up a nice, well-built body. You go for,、um, you go for piano lessons. You go for music lessons to build dexterity in your fingers, to acumen to the music, to feel that. So you go to China Army Tour for to actually get used to that rhythm. There are meter for tone in your in your mind, so anything happens, you can bring up a meter for. So this one, as well, you want a fortune, accumulate it. How do you accumulate? Be good, do anything good that you encounter upon. Anything that benefits others is good. All right.、Uh, it's like accumulating your wealth. It's like building a wall. So I'm reading from this commentary, and、um, you know. If you are poor, doesn't mean that you can't do merits. Reason why you're poor is because the merit you accumulate in the past life is not enough, and that's why you must even be more. You must you must be even more diligent in accumulating merit. And people who are rich must understand that they have merit because they they have this because of their past accumulation of their merits or fortunes. So they must continue doing it if they want to preserve it. So if you're poor, you can use, you know, good advice, volunteering, or anything, anything you can think about. You know, spare up some time, even though you're busy with work, trying to make a living. Spare one or two minutes of your time, one hour of your life, help others, help the communities, or you know, even write. Well, in ancient time, you can write good books、uh, that advise people to be good. Or promote something that is good. Promotes like good advice. Use your energy if you don't have the wealth. Use your own energy. Use your own time. Time is a form of energy in your life, right? You spare one hour of your life doing this. All right, and doesn't matter what you do, you know, donation or anything. You have to try to complete it. That's how you amass complete merit. Incomplete merit is coming from people who do it halfway and say bye bye. Because you don't get everything. It's fair. You have to do everything towards the end, towards this perfection that you could achieve in your power.、Uh, only when you do it with your heart, you know, full heartedly. Doesn't matter if actually works or not in the end, the the actual thing that you do. But you actually have full intention to go all the way. And you do all you can in your practical、uh, ability, you know your material and your energy in terms of time. You do all you can with that. That's full heartedness, right? It's a sign of that you're going full commitment. This, then you will be able to touch the heavens. And you have to do it as soon as possible, because only then you can accumulate as early as you can.、Uh, And 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 your fortune will come.、Yeah. And do not have the mindset of asking for reward after you do one good thing. So I have a 
grandma across the street. Oh, yeah, I help the volunteering in this temple. Uh, now I should have merits. Where is it? Don't do that. That's that's another offense. <laughs> in a sense, that kind of attitude, right? No one likes it. Do it because it's right. Doesn't matter if there's a reward or not. That kind of person deserves the most merits. It doesn't matter if you got rewarded or not. All right. Obviously, you can ask, demand what is rightfully yours in terms of salary and all that compensation. That's that's about the society health. You know, if people don't compensate properly, then it's creating a culture of taking things for granted. But I'm talking about you volunteer yourself outside of it because you do it because it's the right thing. Or in the work that you do, you don't, um, other than your basic salary on or compensation that you, by law, it's required. You you do something a bit extra, extra uh, helping other people or helping your colleagues up to speed or one or two minutes extra of time, a few hours, one extra hour extra of your time to do something uh, to, to help others, you know, you know, managing their folders or something, you know, just small stuff. You volunteer yourself a bit just because you want to help them you know, to go home as well as early. Then that kind of mindset is also not asking for reward. It's also amassing merits. And the reward may come in from a promotion or a, a very warm and welcoming working environment. Everything takes works. Relationship in work, relationship in family. It, it needs to be accumulated time to time. All right? So that's why you have the second sentence. It's a perfect lead-in. Treats everything with gentleness and compassion. Among the, all the good deeds, this is the best. You know, be gentle, be compassionate. Um, over here is a very uh, big thing. Sixing. So, what kind of, what does compassion mean? Um, it's what humanity is based on, right? We call it how we, how we, how we, how we treat everything with compassion. Everything includes things like your tools, your other than people, other than animal, the things, everything that you use, you have to be um, gentle with it. Don't use it harshly or don't waste it. Use them to their maximum capacity. All right. Like if this table can be used 10 years, 20 years, if and you you have to you know call it as I mean, you have to throw it away after one, two years, then you need to reflect on what kind of using, what kind of user are you? It's not gentle, it's not compassionate. All these little things forms, uh, adds up to your merit, adds up to your score. I mentioned about score when I introduced this. This score is important because right now we are tied by the scores. We can't escape from six reams. That means we have not achieved that merit level where we can not worry about that because everything we do will accumulate merit without even thinking. Now we have this situation where we not paying attention we might fall back into the bad habits that will minus our meritorious goal that comes in form of your quality of life, of your wealth, in form of your lifespan. It's very direct, right? If you want to improve your life, everything's small things like this, you know, you have to have the heart of compassion and compassion shows through your gentleness towards everything, towards people. Uh, and that's kind of heart will always accumulate merits because you will not harm people. And even though you give advice that sounds harsh, you know this person can take it and you give them an earnest advice, all right? And not trying to, you know, Honeyed things up. That's also a compassion. I'm trying to say that because I don't want to give uh, illusion of uh, wrong, wrong thing. Uh, how to say a wrong perception of. So I just say anything nice. That's it. What does nice word mean? Honeyed words, sugar coated words. Oh, you should, you're great or something like that. Oh, those are not nice words. Those are just sugar. It causes diabetes. What I'm talking about real compassion in terms of words, nice words and all that is nice action is you actually benefit that person. That person actually grows as a person, actually matured, actually become 
a um, upstanding member of society, as in that person is um, more wise. Also, like learn from you more. I mean, from your compassion, they also become more compassion, more empathetic, not as ignorant, not as angry, or not as greedy as it was. That's the real benefit because that kind of heart accumulates fortune. You help that person, like teach a person to fish rather than feed them the fish. You help them to accumulate. You teach them how they accumulate the merits. You can use a different terms. You can say that if your mindset is like this, you will never get to anything. So you need to change your path. Something like that. So back to this is um, uh, treats everything with uh, gentleness and compassion. Yep. And we we'll continue with the other two. Zhong Xiao Yu Ti Zheng Ji Hua Ren. He is loyal to his country. Zhong countrymen, filial to his parents, Xiao. Zheng uh, Ji, right? Xiao is also including his brothers and sisters. So, Zheng Ji Hua Ren. He cultivates himself and performs others. So that's the second sentence, the one I read in Chinese. <clears throat> so this, from personal, you know, your personal attitudes. Now you extend it in the place that you live in, you know, your country. Be patriot, I mean, be patriotic. Be uh, love your country. Uh, be loyal. Don't betray them. I can't say much on that. Feel it to your parents and kind to your brothers and sisters. So these are all part of a filial. This is towards your own family. This is towards your own country. All right. So be loyal and be filial. That's the core core topics. But loyal itself in Chinese, um, you know, it does not go. It can go different spectrum. It can go as in sacrifice your life to protect your nations. That's a lot of movies show that a lot of them are touchings, especially with those who are based on real life. But also in forms of everyday, you know, everyday life as a citizen, you don't avoid evade tax. I have to say that a lot of times. Don't try to evade tax. The money that you have is belonging. Like I said, the reason you can accumulate the money is because this nation has provided you that environment for you to. Grow your business, or have a have a facilities for you to go to work, something like that. Obviously, different nations have different policy, and not all of them are good, and you need to fix it. But um, do your part, you know. Don't invade it. Normal people, we won't do that. I'm talking about rich people. Uh, normal people, how much can you evade? <laughs> you tie up to this nation, like. You can't have offshore account. What's the point? You only have like what ten k, twenty k. The point is like no, no matter where you are, who you are, up or high, your position, you you need to do your part for the nation, all right. And also, as the government officials, have you done your job? No. As a company, uh, you know, company staff also, have you done your job? Are you loyal to your duty? All right. Uh, it might be a terrible organization. Sometimes, you know, they might not doing their job well. But have you done your part first? Once you finish your part, uh, if you have done nothing wrong in your in your own role, that's the first step you need to think about. Not other people is wrong. Other is because I'm aware there's a lot of things going wrong with the world, right? I'm not here to say that it's sunshine and rainbow. I'm I I also feel cheesy when I say that. I myself seen a lot. Not because I'm very experienced in life, but I read and perceive, I see, I heard from. But the point is, filtering out all this noise, that whether it be true or not, the core is what are you doing instead? All this that is wrong, that is not right. This is the Dharma in the age, guys. What do you do instead? Have you done things right? Do you have to do right by others? Have you do right by your job? By your task, by your nation, right? If you do right, you know, be an honest person, uh, do your job properly, and improve in your job. You know, everyday people we don't always become a government officials, but even in a company, same thing. What you do, if you done it properly, you know, 
have you create less uh, have you have you helped your team to improve their working capacity and uh, ability improve a lot of processes and all that if you can if you do that then congratulations you're worthy of even bigger role that's fortunate it's very direct doesn't matter how bad the environment you're currently in if you do right by yourself by others then you will one day get promoted or get in the better environment or better working environment that is a that is definite if you're earnest in your in your task and duty you don't fish around then you will all right you you will get the chance to move on so so i'm using this kind of mindset so that you are com you you understand that right it's not like you sit there foolishly do it for nothing everything you do has consequences and consequences does not have to be negative it's, it, it is usually used in negative context remember the consequences but it has response as well good work will be rewarded all right and what kind of good work is good work the work that's not so if troubles or backlog for others to fill in like everything you do you create no backlogs that's it it's clean and you even consider what might happen scenarios that might happen and you cover up for that or you inform the the person who is related to this job your boss or the other team that related to this task you're doing you cover up for them as well as in you you help them to do their job better as well that kind of person who doesn't want this employer who doesn't want this uh public servant to serve their nation right so this is very everyday stuff you know you can do it in your job even you were just in Amazon filling in the boxes for that. I know their company is terrible in their policy, inhumane. But you know, you do your job, you don't skimp, and you, you do all you can, and then you try to find out another job that is better. And if you have proven yourself in this tough environment, right? Even though your country or your company or even your family might not be ideal, or might have a lot of issues, negligence of, you know the laws and all that you know they're not very kind to the people who are less fortunate something like that you do your part well you will still shine through this because in the toughest environment if you can still stay true to your heart means being loyal being filial and being loyal not blind loyal you being loyal to what is right right and for all it's bad or, or good it's like family right for all that is uh, terrible that happens Right, not everyone have that. I don't have that, but some people might have a very terrible um, upbringings and all that. They're still your parents, still your siblings. Right, no matter how terrible the situation happens, maybe the arguments or you know abuse or something like that, you still have to. Um, in the end of the day, still your parents. You still have to maintain a semblance of connection with them. So as your nation, no matter how terrible that is, how unjust that is. How you know prejudice you have received from this nation, right? It's still a place where you where you call home until you migrated, of course, which we did. Right? It's still a place you call home. Even you migrated, it's still a place where you were born. So there's still a little bit of um, say, qing in man, emotions in there, and you're loyal to that memory. You're loyal to that part in your life. That's how I, that's my tips about this. You know, you don't like company as well. The, everything's terrible. They don't do things properly. Maybe you've seen so much people turn over. Right now, it's not your time yet. Do your job well, right? Don't create enemies and all that. And and always have confidence that you know this is not you. This environment is not does not define you. This environment propels you to a better one. But you're still staying loyal to the idea of you know being true to who you are being do right by others no matter where it is doesn't matter if they're good or bad right that's that's the best thing about lawyer in chinese where it's even better it's called zhong xing ah, it's formed by two words zhong if you guys seen the china's uh, chinese words zhong guo the nation of moderation i'll be honest if we don't put all the imperial big nation thinking zhong guo means what the nation that cultivates moderation 
中庸之道，一个国家能产 ，a nation that can cultivate path of moderation， that means true to heart， is called 中国的 the middle kingdom or middle nation nation that are moderate。But we're going back to the actual word 中心啊、uh, ，loyal means your heart is， you know， true true to your heart， and you're not um extreme going to any of the extremes。All right, Xiao is the elder word, elder people. This is a combination of two words. The bottom one is san, the the top one is the top part of the elder in Chinese. So Xiao means the elders generations passed down to the younger generations. They keep going. And so, how how does that show? Be kind, be loving, take care of them. All right. So and obviously the branch from your parents is you and your siblings. To take of each other as well, especially when those people, when you grow up, one day your parent leave you, or you have for the memory is your siblings as well, and hopefully you have nephews and nieces. So that's it. That's how you accumulate merits, guys. There's nothing out of the blue. Everyday life, everything you do, you know, stay by what is what really matters, you know. Loyalty and feel, uh, uh, and be loving to people who are close to you, who are your parents and siblings. And then you move on to actual cultivation. He cultivates himself and reforms others. See how they put that word together. 正己化人 Person who cultivate himself will create an example for others to follow. You don't tell them to follow you. You don't even want them to follow you. They will follow you. If you do it right, why? Because they saw you shining. What 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 does it mean by shining? They saw you do everything you do, everything you say. It's not a show. You're actually trying to do things right and actually conducting common sense in your work or in your life. Things that make sense. You know, what is not right does not make sense in a sense, right? Like 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 this does not. You should not do this. You know. Um, uh, I say, uh, it, 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 this this work requires you to, um, yeah, I can't bring an example. But the problem is, if you do things by uh, common sense, you do things by, you know, earnest, you know, and you do things a bit about uh, as less selfish as you could, people will will feel it. People will know you're real, and they will, they will how to say, naturally follow your example. Uh, They will emulate because people is human is a creature of emulation. So we love to mimic people. I always keep observing and keep thinking. Yeah, we love to mimic people. Like when we saw something cool, that's how fashion came in, right? Like we saw that person wearing such a cool hairstyle and clothing, we mimic them. But that's what's that's what's cool around、uh, on the street、uh, in this season, the fashion of the week, something like that. Same goes for attitude, moral behavior. There's even a reason why you have like a for us Australian of the year, or even though we might not take notice, our own model, maybe you know anime or any 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 sort of character that we build up, the statue that we build up. There's a saying in Greece, right? Like、uh, I forgot, it's like why people have statues, why people build statues, because everyone has that idealized model、uh, of someone or something. God of Athena represents what love and something like that. So, so, so does us. We have our own idealized、um, state. We want to be like that person, something like that. And if you encounter that person, that actually touches you, and you be like, oh yeah, I really want to be him, like him or her. And this is who I want to be, or this is the kind of manager I want to be. If I, if I'm like that one day, if I get into that position, or this is the kind of monk I like to be. If I'm aspire to be a monk, or this is the kind of、uh, human I like to be, for my parents or something like that, the best person you can emulate, I mean, the best position of you to cultivate yourself and reform others is as parents, or as a as a brothers or sisters. People close to you can see it very quickly because they've been seeing you in that mode since you were born. And if you actually truly change yourself, as in you get better and better in your Uh, managing your habits and 
you know, your life is rhythm it you have you know able to control your temperaments not getting it lash out they will see it straightforward they will know that oh you no longer you know yell at something uh, uh, anything that resembles discomfort something like that oh all right yeah so <clears throat> It shows concern for the welfare of the lonely widow and orphan. Jin Gu Xu Gua, this is with Kongzi. Jin Gu Xu Gua is in love with you. Jin Gu Xu Gua is basically what show concern for the welfare of lonely widow and orphan. So you know we have orphanage, we have those, especially Catholics and Christian. They have a lot of this organization charities. They do take this phrase seriously. But obviously, there are more improvements in terms of the quality. Like instead of just letting them take care, because Master Ching Kong also have the multi faith dialogue. I'm I'm bringing this 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 one is quite straightforward. So to explain it directly means that people who are disadvantaged or people who are in need of care more care than others, especially people who lost their parents, who lost their loved ones, the other half, uh, who are maybe you know old. Elder, elderly, but no family taking care of them, right? Like they are children to not come back, something like that. And if you happen to be in a position where you can take care of them, you know, we see. So I seen a, a lot of um, news like back in the lockdown, and some people like old man losing one of his hand. He was a is in China, I think Shanghai. He losing one of his hand because he was a retired, he's an army veteran, and. This young man is very nice. He cook every meal for this old man, even though they don't know each other. It's just this old neighbor walks up. He recorded this. See, this is what cultivates himself and reform others. So he he just do it. You know, he don't think of anything. He just say, oh yeah, I'll just might as well cook another meal, and then just bring it up to him, knock on his door and give him the food. And he did that for a few months. You know. So they become good friends and even sit down and play chess and something like that, have a drink. So it can be fun thing, you know. It, it, it can open your life. It might be troublesome at the beginning. You try to cook more meals or anything, but once you open up, it's 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 a different side of your world. It's you know your world will become more gentle and compassionate because what you do is gentle and compassionate. So everything arises from your heart. So shows concern for the welfare for others. Right, not just relying on the government welfare. That is systematic. That's you're lucky if your nation do that. If your nation doesn't do that, then we have to rely on the people, which is the organization, the non voluntary non-profits. <clears throat> and why bring up Master Chingko in this? Because he has been to a lot of nice nurseries and uh, especially the elderly retirement home in Australia. Master Chingko was visiting that during the multi-faith. Uh, event. He, I think, back in Singapore, actually, he has we still a lot of um, elderly home, the retirement home. Um, it's actually more elderly home, like they take care of the disadvantaged old man, and he seen all of them just sit there and waiting, waiting for what? Waiting for the time up. It's a terrible feeling, isn't it? You sit there, it's like waiting in a line for food, right? At least in the end of the day, you have a nice warm food. So you wait for a long line on a off on on a popular store, but this guy, all these old people, he observed they're all sitting there, getting fat, taking care of all that, you know, excrements and all that thing, nursed by the professional caretaker. But that's the physical part. What about the soul? They sit there. What do we wait? They wait for their times up. Whether they go up or down, but this part is so painful, isn't it? If you imagine you sit yourself but alone, your body cannot move as well. Uh, you're bound by the chair because you can't move without people move, putting you into the wheelchair. And even in wheelchair, you need to be pushed. There's only so much you can do with your hand. And then you get you have to rely on other people to caretake you. And obviously, you feel terrible. You will lash out at others, but without going too far, what he observed is all of them sit there and waiting, waiting to for their times up. And he say like, this is something that 
what does well in the Buddhist community. Like even the current one I mean is the Buddhist uh, Amitabha uh, New South Wales or Mito Chun in Pennsylvania. I, I'm pretty sure they also have the same. They, they don't have that title of retirement home or anything, but they just open up for the elderly people come over to help volunteer chopping vegetables. Why is that? Why is that a better way? Because first thing he he don't just receive, he also can give. And that feeling of give is actually quite fulfilling. That's why we work. Obviously, we work to survive, to get plate, food on our table. But we also work. I mean, in true work, we also feel like we are contributing to something. Especially when your team is performing well, your whole feeling is so good. So, same goes for this volunteering. And these elderly people always come here. Not only that, we take care of the spiritual part of it. Chanting Amito for, you know, that's how Master Ching will say in Mito Chun. I think he also promotes the Mito Chun or something. That's the whole conception of it. It allows people to come here. They can stay as well. Like in Brisbane, they have their own places in the Brisbane uh, Amitabha group. Uh, they have their own places to stay. Then a few people, they register. That was pre-COVID. I don't know what happened now. Um, they can stay over for a few, few, way, few weeks or even months. And they have their own set. Even if you stay long, obviously you need to contribute a lot. Or even just one day, right? This, these are the money from 10 directions. But the point is, you stay there, you also can contribute. Sweeping the floor, even especially big events like... Uh, San Cecilia and the Trizini ceremony, everyone just come together, preparing all that food, dumplings. Oh, that feeling is different, right? It's like when I was young, when you were young, I think, Auntie Ispo, you were in a big group of family where everyone's preparing for New Year. And this one was done weekly. That feeling is different. Everyone can sit down and have tea. This, kind of, this is the kind of retirement home I want to retire to if you want. If I, have, if I still have my life spent left by then. It's like where you you still owe, but you still contributing. Doesn't even how doesn't matter how small it is. Sweeping floor, you know, chopping vegetables, something to do, and then and then you can interact with people, especially in the in the in the, our settings where everyone has the same belief, understanding, and especially in pure land. It's telling you to prepare for your, you know, afterlife in a sense. When you pass on, you move on to pure land. And now you have to cultivate. So this is also part of your cultivation. All in one. As long as your mindset is correct and you don't give into anger, hatred, ignorance. You, know, you clean up this rubbish and slowly grow up your merits. So merit can transform in many ways. For us, it's pure land. So that's what I'm trying to say. Is especially for the retirement home. That's the um, kind of direction they should go. No, you would not just sit there and wait. Sometimes you are bedridden with a very serious condition, but normal pe old people in the general, I think in the average level, they still can walk, they still can talk. So they should have the environment where they should contribute to the community in a protected space where you know there's still people looking after them, but they can st still cook, they can, sh they can even take care of other elder people. I feel it's different. Trust me, it's um, I think that's it. It's 11 o'clock. Uh, we have uh, done the first part. First half, all right? Yeah, I think it's half. Oh, no, it's not. We're done like uh, this much for the section two of Tai Shang Kai Impian, Treaties and Response and Retributions. Thank you for the... Um, uh, you know, for listening to into this, uh, I'm still practicing, trying to enriching the content of this. It will do very well with proper examples, which I'm still working on. But right now, I'm just talking in circle about the talk, theories, the, the understanding, conceptuals. Very heavy on concept rather than examples. I did give a few, but I uh, will work hard for that with my own life experience, with the experience I had from others like Master Ching Kong or even aunties or Auntie Yanzi or even other friends. But I also bring some historical example given by uh, the books 
that I have read, you know, the temple books, the books of Mr. Yu, Mr. Uh, Liao Fan as well. So thank you so much. Um, to summarize all this, we can talk so much and we can get it just like that. But to do it, um, it takes time and time is the only way for you to do it well. The provider you let time do it, you give time to do it. That means you put effort into it. Um, in the beginning, you may sound like a bit forced. It may sound like you're trying to earn the wages of merit. But um, this is the mindset that you will transform eventually as you see the real substance of doing good. It's actually for doing good for others, it's actually taking care of yourself. Taking care of others actually taking care of yourself. Uh, if you're locked up from the outside and just taking care only of yourself, you're hurting yourself. Because what else do you need if you're already secure with food, shelter, entertainment, any kind of entertainment, TVs or anything, even friends? What else do you need? It's empty, to be honest. So you have to need to, another step is to go out and treat everything with gentle and compassion. So other than the survival thing or the, your own basic needs and stuff, outside, you have to start to learn how to be kind and gentle. And that way you will start to enlarge your society, I mean, your, your life perspective. No longer locked to yourself. No longer locked to one person. And you become a person with a bigger heart. A bigger heart can carry bigger merits and hence will get receive bigger fortunes. And they will use their fortunes if you stay true to yourself, not being blinded by great greed or hatred, then you will be able to share it with more people. That's how you roll up snowballing your merits, guys. That's how wealthy people get wealthier and poorer people get poorer not just the system, but on this level, where they feel like they are tight with everything they eat and drink for the impoverished people. And they, if they choose the path of getting even more stingy or even more tight, if a person who are in, a, in spite of terrible physical wealth, uh, wealth condition, like they don't have enough to give, they still give, despite they don't have much to give with, like homeless people, I saw that they still give to other homeless people or to other, they're still able to do the, the good things, even though they have nothing else left with them, in our sense. This kind of person will receive huge merits in future. person who already have so many things, still hold things up, this person will run out of his own tap one day and fall back into the lower class of wealth. So these are very dynamic stuff, guys. Right? This is what Tyson Guy been trying to tell us. Right? Be good to others because you will eventually be good to yourself. If you only be good to yourself, you are hurting yourself. Thank you so much. Uh, let's end this session in 10 times Amito 4 and dedication of merits. The answer. Ah, uh, me, to. For a me to 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 for dedication of merits. First, the special dedication. May the merits and virtues accrue from this Dhamma talk, uh, from this practice session of the talk on the good book. Treaties on response and retributions be dedicated to all beings who suffer 
from natural calamities and man-made disasters such as wars and from the pandemics. Um, and this merit also dedicated to all beings and their karmic creditors, yes, you know, the suffers from this. And also dedicated uh, to my grandfather, who is currently in stage 3B cancel, and hopefully he's and his karmic creditors will be liberated one way or the other uh, from the pain and sufferings. And may those, uh, may all the com Buddhist communities, uh, my brothers and sisters of all Amitabha Buddhist communities and their karmic creditors uh, be liberated and be able to born in pure land. Now, or when time is up, or may their life now be fulfilling and happy and able to cultivate even better than yesterday. Uh, may those who see and may the various and virtues accrue from this work, adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. <clears throat> may those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teachings for the rest of this life. Then they be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo, thank you very much, Auntie Yanzi, Gan Jianya.